Good. Okay. All right, so we're going to be installing this barn door on the outside of this bathroom, this small bathroom. Um, so I want to first say barn doors are awesome for closets and spaces that don't need to be locked. Um, for bathrooms, I, I, they're great. They can work. I just don't think they're the best option for a bathroom door because of privacy. Because the door is going to be on the outside of the bathroom and there's going to be you know, you can be able to hear everything outside of the room pretty easily. Now, it would have been ideal in this situation to put a pocket door in here, but I didn't have the ability because there's too many things. There's a vanity on the other side of this wall on the other bathroom, and I have an outlet here. So the pocket door idea was not going to work because it was going to take too much effort to refinangle everything behind this wall. So that's why we're going with the barn door. The second thing is, is we ordered this in advance and this was a 30 inch door opening. This is a 36 inch door. So with the trim on either side of that existing door was like 34 inches. So the 36 inch door was going to cover the trim and everything when it's closed, which is the way I wanted it. But when we started remodeling the bathroom, we had some unexpected plumbing things where we had to move the toilet over because of the spacing between the toilet and the shower and we wanted to maintain the largest shower that we could which was 36 inches so we had to move the vanity down and meet up against this wall and the problem with that in this situation was that it was going to overhang my doorway by four or five inches which would have looked awful as soon as you open up the store you would have seen the edge of the vanity and i just think it would have looked really sloppy so what we did was shrink this opening and now it's down to a 25 inch opening. So in reality, I probably would have bought, purchased a 60 inch door kit, just having a 30 inch door covering that rather than the 36. It's gonna look fine from the outside here. I don't think it's gonna look anything different, but on the inside, you know, you're only gonna see part of the door. So that's one thing I'm not exactly happy about, but we ordered this in advance and we're gonna just work with what we have. So. It's a fairly easy installation. First thing you want to do, I mean, you have to pay attention to the model that you're purchasing. I'll leave a link in the description below on what model this was. Um, but all of them are going to be a little bit different. But the one thing about barn doors is typically they're much taller than regular doors. Uh, and, and you want that to be so that you don't have to change all the trim and everything around your door. So uh, this door is 84 inches. Most standard doors in your house are 80 inches tall, so they make it taller so they can overcome the trim around your door opening. So that's why this door is a little, you know, more massive than the, the rest of the doors. So the first thing you want to do is install the rail system. And, uh, you know, if this was a new construction job, I would have put blocking all the way across here so that no matter where I would screw my screws into, it would have had some wood blocking to get into. But in this situation, this is a remodel job. I mean, I'm not gonna tear open the whole wall and redo everything. So there's different ways. They have, most of the kits do come with anchor systems, like a toggle bolt system for where you don't have framing. So hopefully we can get some uh, framing somewhere along the line, but it's really hard to tell. I mean, they, they space these holes 16 on center. No, they don't. <laughs> 17 and a half. So most likely even on a regular traditional framing job, this, these things aren't going to line up. Um, so you're going to end up using toggle board bolts. Um, but if you were doing new construction or if you were removing this wall for some reason, definitely put some blocking behind that. It's definitely the better way to go. So the first thing is, is to put this up. So you want to measure up 83 or 85 and three quarter to the center of where these holes are. And that's where we're going to be drilling and installing that. They basically just come with these little anchors that bump this out on the wall. So that's what's gonna be screwed in along with this. So fairly easy, but it's just uh, a matter of getting everything pre-drilled and, and ready to go. So let's just go ahead and put this bar up and just make sure that it's right with the laser on, laser on the center of these holes. So we'll just mark these holes. Like I said, hopefully we get a stud, but I'm not really counting on it. All 
And then with a 3 8 inch bit, we're going to drill some holes here, see if we have any. Okay, no framing there. No framing there. Yeah, there's a little bit of framing there. I guess you can work with that. Nothing there. Okay, so the way these things work, actually I have to got to drill a bigger hole for these, um, but you just slide these in and then these things kind of hold that anchoring system together. Basically just take this plastic sleeve and make this tight to the wall. I guess that just holds that into place. And it comes with these screws. Now these, these anchors here are for if you went into concrete, but we're not going to need those. So let's just make sure that we can grab. Yeah. So we'll get all these set first. So these are the stops. This is basically what stops the door. So you want to slide these on first before you go and um, put this into, or put this track on, because you won't be able to put it on later. So just basically just has a couple set screws on the top. So, and this is going to go all the way to the end on this one, just because the, the door needs to come all the way to the edge of the wall. So this will be the, the maximum opening or closure of that door. And then we'll just stick this one on this side for now and we'll move this over once we get it, all our support anchors in. It's a little tricky doing it yourself, but if you have a half inch driver, that's kind of nice because then these basically are going to go through these holes and then through this as well. So you kind of have to hold everything together. I'll we'll just get this started here. Nice, nice. That's awesome. Really? What the f man? So we're just using a little bit of 20 minute mud. I just mix them up so that we can try to get this done today. So this is sometimes <coughs> the way it works. Should have been a little bit more careful with the way I put those toggle bolts in there. And 
They're kind of st specialty, so I think I'd have a hard time running around trying to find that. And I think it's just going to be faster just to patch this than it is to mess around with that. At least I can get this done today rather than just running around trying to look for toggle bolts. And then we'll just address some of the painting later. So really all you have to do is a little bit of wet sanding. You don't really have to get into the, making a big dusty mess. Just wet sand it, prime it, and then paint it. Uh, in this situation, I actually, the client was going to plan on painting the bedroom at another time. So I got lucky in that aspect. Um, I guess lesson learned in this entire demonstration is get blocking behind your barn doors because the toggle boats they come with are very... Um, are not that great and very frustrating this was the last day of a 10-day project for this bathroom remodel so um you know i was already kind of exhausted from the the last couple weeks of work and this was just like one of the final things to do and that's always when things fight you so i'm hoping this video will help you um know the kind of things you'll be getting into before you get started with uh, a barn door installation All right, so once you get your hardware on here, pretty simple, just to attach them through the door. And then you just tilt this at a 45 degree angle to get them on the tracks. And you just slide it down. So pretty easy. And then you need this little stopper track that will go inside of the door track at the bottom. So in this instance, we're pretty low to the ground. So roughly two inches away from your opening is really where you want it. This is such a long wide door in this situation that I'm not even concerned about where exactly it is at, but you just obviously want this to stay in the, the bottom track. There's a little groove right here that this slides into. So screw this in. Okay, so that goes in that groove. And then the, key, the way you want to keep that in there by moving this and keeping this door from going any further than this because then that'll keep it in the track but like i said we're we're on a pretty oversized door here so you just tighten that and that'll keep that door from moving okay and then since this is a door for our bathroom, I'm gonna put a little handle on the other side so you can close it. Typically on barn doors, you're not really passing through. It's usually for a closet or something. So you wanna go in there, right here and close it from the inside. All right. 